So we are here with the cast and the director of Very Good Girls. Thanks, you guys, for stopping by. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So the film premiered last night. How was, was that an exciting moment? You seemed very happy to be there. Very exciting, especially for me, you know, like coming home to family because I've been an advisor at the labs for so long and it was great. Yeah, John Cooper, the director of the festival, sort of got teary-eyed introducing the film. He cried. I, I was very moved, too. It was, felt great. So you were saying in the Q&A that you um, wrote this script 20 years ago or something like that and always wanted to tell a coming of age story about two best friends. I did. I wanted to do it from a girl's point of view because I couldn't find one to watch. Mm -hmm. And I didn't want my granddaughter to grow up like that. So um, it's been something I've been meaning to do for a long time. And did you guys relate? You said um, the preparation was only in being a young woman. So you must have related to the experience of your character. Yeah, I mean, I think that there's something in the movie that any woman could relate to uh, as you grow up and get older and go through those things. So, yeah, for me, yeah, that question was about any research. I didn't, I didn't do any, I didn't do any research. That's so no. silly. You didn't do any research? <laughs> yeah. About being, about being a young woman? That's so weird. <laughs> I did she does so do, much. She does <laughs> daily research. <laughs> Yeah. I searched my soul deep for that <laughs> research. Your chemistry as friends was so great. Did you get to know each other before this started? We did know each other before this started. Yeah. How? Yeah. Uh, I, what, we what, so both went to a school, school called Campbell Hall. Mm -hmm. We went at different times. And you go to the same college, right? Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like we keep kind of missing each other. Like, I'm on my way out. I'm in. in. <laughs> yeah, same thing with high school. Well, but we have, we have all, this, our, our, all of our closest friends are a valley all crew. Mutual, so LA valley Times crew. Valley Crew. Yeah. <laughs> Respect LA. Yeah. Yeah. Eight one eight represent. <laughs> so did that um, influence the casting at all? That they were already sort of had this. Well, relationship? I didn't know that before. Uh, yeah, but it was I was kind delighted of funny. to find it out. We were, you know, I called them up and said, "How about you girls hang with each other for a while?" They said, oh, oh, "We know each other." <laughs> we, we do, yeah, actually. Yeah. We did a little hanging. Yeah. We, we had a couple of places we liked to go, and um, we did some cooking. We, did, we spent a lot of time with each other. That was good. But they knew each other already, so that was cool. What about you, Boyd? How did you fit into this female-centric posse? Oh, God. I was in a separate camp completely, and not, not allowed to see them at all, ever. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, that's true. I asked him in the beginning to stay away from the girls because... I didn't know that. I wanted him to be a bit of a surprise. I didn't want them to be too comfortable with him at the beginning. <laughs> Unfortunately, that was not what happened. They all became friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because we, in the end, we don't know so much about you. You're this mysterious figure. Was it hard to get into the mindset, or did you have a whole backstory? Um, yeah, I mean, there's some scenes that we shot that, you know, didn't make it into the film about where David came, came from and his, his upbringing, which is kind of a juxtaposition between their upbringing, I think. Well, it was important to me that part of the movie was about what each of these kids was dragging as family um, burden mm -hmm. into, the, into the solving of these uh, situations. Mm. But for many reasons, even though we shot a lot of a little bit of the backstory for for David, time, money, and ultimately storytelling. It didn't make it in, mm -hmm. so um, he had he had a backstory, and I hope it comes through in some way. It does, yeah. But he's still a mysterious yes. figure over yeah. there, yeah. Yes. So for you two. Um, do you, have you had relationships and friendships in your life? Because obviously the movie gets people thinking about that unique sort of girl friendship um, that despite this horrible thing that happens between them, they still feel a connection to each other. Have you experienced that in your own life? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I've had the same friends actually since uh, preschool, which is rare and weird. And we all, my whole group of girlfriends, we all know it's rare and weird, but we're sisters, we're family, like don't have to see each other at all. You know, it's, it is a special relationship that means so much to me in my life. So it was important for me to be part of a film that, that um, had that story in it. What about you? Do you, go, you guys, did you just go to college or you've been there for a couple of years? Um, I've been there, it was my second year. Okay. Um, but yeah, I mean, my best friends are from high school and we all kind of go to school in New York, most of us, and, and it's the same thing. I haven't known them as long but I still they're like my my family and you you go through things and um, I think you know a true friend is when you can get through it and move forward and if you can't then you know it's maybe not 
meant to be, but I think these girls are kind of connected no matter what. <clears throat> Well, and part of the story is about learning that you can't have any relationship without telling the truth mm-hmm. either to yourself and to them. Mm-hmm. And so they get that's how they get through it, by doing that and trusting the other one that they can do it. I also really like the emphasis on that all-important summer before you do head off into the real world, whether it be college or a job or whatever, moving out. Um, was You clearly must have had an impactful time during that portion of your life. Well, I, you know, there's a poster in... in um, Dakota's bedroom and, and Lily's bedroom in the movie of Jules and Jim. And that summer for me was a lot about watching movies and how watching movies open doors to things. And Jules and Jim was very much about, it doesn't have to be like this. There are so many other ways to do things. So on that level, yes, it was, it was very much an impactful summer before I left for college. You were just saying, um, you, before you came here, you got all this free makeup. What has the Sundance experience been like? You guys have been, have you been? Uh, yeah, I came, yeah. Um, I think, two sun dances ago. I, guess that's, I don't know if that's correct uh, terminology. <laughs> Have you guys seen it change a lot? What, what, I mean, you're in and out pretty quickly this year, but... Yeah, um, I, I mean, this is my third year in a row, I guess, and I get, I've never been here, not on opening weekend. So it doesn't mm-hmm. really feel like a festival. Like yeah, the, you like miss the energy, yeah. Yeah. but it's also nice because you get to see like the beauty of Park City. Mm. And it's not so anxiety ridden. <laughs> well, I think uh, Cooper is saying that they want to change it so that people stay through the whole time. So they've been programming movies that the people want to see movie, yeah. all the way. I mean, it's closing with the Jobs movie. But my connection to Sundance is the Institute. Mm-hmm. And I've been you know, an advisor at the Writing Lab for maybe 15 years. So I feel like this is family. And all the rest of it is just stuff around that. So it's great for me to be here. I know you guys have to head to your celebratory brunch, so thanks for stopping by. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.